All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is John Wayne, and today we are going to discuss video one of three government gold series startup instructions and checklists for government contracting registrations and certifications. If you want to start a business, number one, you need to do your research and learn what it is that you want to sell. I've heard so many times, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. But if you do what you love and it's labor intensive, then expect to be providing a lot of labor, etc. Once you decide what it is that you want to sell, either product or service, you're going to have to start your business by registering with the state. Whatever state you're in has different rules, laws and regulations. So does the city, county and local government. You either need to use an attorney or a legal service to determine where's the best place to start the business. Once you've figured that out, then you can set up in that state as a DBA, S Corp, C Corp, LLC, etc. This will cost money. You may have to run a fictitious name ad, which also may cost money, depending on the state rules, laws, and regulations. Once you've created your business in that state, you're going to get the documentation that shows that you're registered in the state. Then you have to register with the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, IRS is to get your EIN or your TIN taxpayer identification number. EIN and TIN is the same thing, depending on if you set up as a DBA or as a, a corporation. Once you have your ID number from the IRS, then you can open a business or personal checking account, depending on how you set the business up. And you would need to provide them with your EIN and your articles of incorporation to prove that you can open that account. Some accounts are free, some cost money. Do your research. Once you've got your uh, checking account set up, then you can sign up for a merchant account. A merchant account is how you will accept money via credit card or uh, check authorization form, etc. You can get this through Square or PayPal if you don't qualify for a merchant account. You can also set up a free Venmo, Cash App, or Zelle account to receive payments. These services are owned by PayPal and Square and by the banks, and they're free. So set those up regardless. Once you've got your account set up, then you can register with Dun & Bradstreet. This is the toll free number for Dun & Bradstreet. That's their website. It doesn't cost money to get set up to get a DNB number. Once you have your Dun & Bradstreet number, then you can start working on creating your physical aspects like a capability statement, write down your elevator pitch, make business cards, make brochures, get your letterhead in place, etc. This may cost money if you don't take the time to do it yourself. You can pay someone. In many cases, your time is money and it makes more sense to pay professionals to do this kind of thing than to try and do it yourself. But if you don't have the money, you can do it yourself. Once you've got that in place, you can create a website. Again, could cost money if you don't have the time to do it yourself. If you've got the time to do it yourself, that's great. Give it a try. If you don't have the money to pay a professional to do it, that's fine. Once you have your website created, you would, you would need a domain email address that's set up with your domain name. So an example would be if your domain name is your website domain.com, you would want info or your name or what have you so that you have a real email address that's attached to your domain name, your website. Once you have that in place, you can create an account in login.gov. You have to register an account, login.gov, in order to be able to register with any other federal government system and some state systems. It's mandatory, M-A-N-D-A-T-O-R-Y. You have to have a login.gov in order to create an account in these other systems. Once you register in login.gov, which is going to require that you have an email and a phone number so they can verify your information, you will be able to register in SAM.gov. You register in SAM.gov to get your CAGE code, Corporate and Government Entity Code, which verifies who you are, and that pre-verifies through login. Once you've registered in SAM to start your CAGE code registration, then you can process the old CCR, ORCA, uh, and a few other systems in SAM, which will eventually upload to the DSBS. We will cover all these different entities and how they work in the second part of this video 
uh, part two of three, government gold. So it explains how these systems work. But for now, you need to know what systems, not how they work. Once you're registered in, uh, once you process your CCR and ORC in SAM, then you can start in SAM with the FEMA Industry Liaison Program. It's a part in SAM where you just click a box, literally. Once you've completed that, you get your cage code. Then you can set up beta.sam.gov, which is the old FBO, which is where you find opportunities to bid on. Once you've started your account in beta.sam.gov, then at that point, you can register any prime contractors via their website as a subcontractor to do subcontracts for them. On their website, you'll typically find a link where you can register and the people that you're typically going to talk to there is the SBLO or the SDO. SBLO is the Small Business Liaison Officer or they're also called Supplier Diversity Officers. Once you register on the Prime contractors websites then you can do work for them as a subcontractor if you also want to do business with any state county or city government you have to register with that state that county or that city or that parish or any other local government they will have a link on their website where you can register with them as a contractor to do state county city parish or local government contracts at that point, you also, one of my best kept secrets, you want to register with every local government with their disaster recovery or supplier diversity division. So in other words, even though FEMA, even though FEMA is the primary contractor, primary purchaser of disaster recovery because they work, for, they, they are the federal government, Every state, county, and local city government has their own disaster recovery division, which you want to register with ahead of time so that if FEMA is ever called in later, you're already working for the local government disaster recovery once FEMA gets there. Once you're set up with those systems, you want to register with the Department of Transportation as a DBE, Disadvantaged Business Enterprise, if you're a veteran, woman, or minority if you qualify, you can register with the Department of Transportation, which is a state certification for those set-asides, which will help you with state contracts and can benefit you on the federal side. You want to make sure that you get set up and start marketing yourself properly for simplified acquisition contracts, no-bid contracts, where they can hire you without putting it out for bid. Once you've been set up with everything through SAM and you have your cage code, you can also register in HUBZone if you qualify. You can search the HUBZone map, see if you qualify. If you qualify, you can register. That will put you in position to be able to do HUBZone contracts. The last step you want to do before you start winning contracts is to make sure you register in the old WAWF, which is now called IRAPT. This allows you to be paid by the federal government. In order to get paid, in many cases, you have to invoice through Wide Area Workflow, which is now called IRAP, to get paid. In order to do that, you have to register with them and you have to watch their training videos and certify that you are set up to be able to invoice through WAWF IRAPT in order to get paid. You can also register with the federal government if you're a woman owned or a veteran owned, if you qualify through the SAM system and you can use the SBA uh, or PTAC to get help with that or if you don't want to mess with it you can pay someone to do it as well. You need to join a third-party bid service so that you get opportunities to bid on that are outside of the federal government. Remember that beta.sam.gov only tracks federal opportunities and some subcontracts and a few other opportunities. It doesn't track state, local, county, city, uh, parish, or a local government. And it also does not, in, in most cases, uh, follow subcontracting opportunities. And there are other opportunities that other systems can qualify for. And if you don't know of a third-party service you want to utilize, we can help you out with one. Number 22. 
You need to get training and coaching from a mentor. If you've got someone who's willing to train you and help you for free at this point, because this is when you're going to start bidding on contracts and winning contracts, you need that all the help you can get. If you can find someone who will give it to you for free, get it. Keep that time. Utilize it. If not, hire a professional and start winning contracts. Once you start winning contracts, then you can check if you've been in business at least one year to see if you qualify for an 8A. And if you do, go ahead and start the process. It can take one year to, to process an 8A. Uh, and if you qualify, you're definitely going to want to utilize it. It's like your hub zone. Uh, it's a very important set aside if you qualify and it will help you. Once you've been in business and you've been winning contracts and you're doing good, you want to register as a GSA, a General Services Administration vendor, to get on an FSS or a GSA schedule. It's the same thing. When you're ready, when you qualify, this can be huge. If you want to sell medical products or devices, and sometimes it's just simple cotton swabs or Q-tips or what have you, or certain PPE is going to require you to be on a DAPA. A DAPA is a lot like a GSA. Uh, it's a, it's a, a next level certification to help you sell those types of products or services. As your, as your, success is increasing and you're winning more contracts and you're realizing that you need to attend industry days and open houses, do it. This is an example of an uh, industry day that was processed just not too long ago and you can watch the video here. You want to start replying to sources sought, RFIs, uh, pre-solicitations, anything that gives you an opportunity to start building that relationship with those purchasing officers, CORs up front, you can do that by replying to sources, sought RFIs, et cetera. You want to start sending your capability statement to purchasing officers and CORs. Any chance you get to send that out, do it. Anytime you get a chance to send a site visit, if you can attend a site visit and it's local and it's not going to cost you a lot of money or time to do it, do it because it, it allows you to create that opportunity to build a relationship with those purchasing agents before you start bidding. Always keep learning. If you want to learn more, Search John Wayne Contracts on YouTube. And the bottom line is GeoBizOps, John Wayne Contracts, and the back office will help you succeed.